Hey everyone, this is Anton for Pocket Now. Hina behind the camera. This is a comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Samsung Galaxy S4. Our previous hands-on happening in New York. We are here in Barcelona. So let's take a look at last year's model compared to the new kid on the block. So at a first glance, if you look at them from a considerable distance, you will see that they look almost the same. But if you put them side by side, you will see that the Galaxy S5 here on the left is somewhat taller than the Galaxy S4 and that is because the screen is larger but it's not by that much larger we are having a 5 inch full HD display on the Samsung Galaxy S4 and only a 5.1 inch full HD display on the Samsung Galaxy S5 of course the difference in height is because of other hardware we'll get to that too but first we just want to size it up so that you can see how these two compare we'll just switch the screens off on both of them this is how they look side by side I'd say they're approximately uh, there's approximately four or five millimeters in difference between the two when it comes to thickness they're considerably the same I don't have the exact numbers but you can uh, see it clearly here and also the Galaxy S5 is approximately two or three millimeters wider so you can see it right there continuing on towards the specs we mentioned the display which is uh, full HD on both of them 5.1 inches 5.0 inches but behind the screen there is a Exynos 5 octa-core processor or, or a Snapdragon 600 processor on last year's model compared to the Galaxy S5 which is powered by a quad-core processor clocking at 2.5 gigahertz. There's two gigabytes of RAM on last year's model, two gigabytes of RAM on this year's model and both models come with 16, 32 and 64 gigabytes of internal storage of course augmentable via micro SD card. Flipping into the back is where more differences happen. We'll see the good old hyperglaze finish on the Galaxy S4 and this Galaxy S5 has a rubbery feel to it because this phone is also water and dust resistant, not water and dust proof. This cross drilled uh, rubbery uh, back gives it a better, much better feel in the hand than the hyperglaze. Gives you that security that you will not slip it out of your hand. And while we are here, we're looking at the standard 13 megapixel camera with no optical image stabilization plus the LED flash on the Galaxy S4 compared to the 16 megapixel camera with the LED flash on the Galaxy S5. There's a lot of features. The event was all about autofocus, faster focus, HDR for both video and uh, stills. And right there, that's not a secondary camera. That is actually a heart rate sensor. So if, it, if enabled, I touch this sensor here and it will read my heartbeat. Going on to the top of them, uh, we'll see that Samsung repositioned the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to the opposite side compared to the Galaxy S4 and they switched places. The IR blaster is now on the left opposed to the right on the previous generation. Still the power button on the same location, nothing else towards the bottom. We have the micro USB port for syncing and charging, main microphone right there on the bottom. Let's flip to the other side where we'll see the volume rockers for volume up, volume down and nothing else. On the back the speakers are approximately at the same location so the main design principles are being followed to the letter. The Galaxy S5 looks 90-95% just like the Galaxy S4. Going back to the bottom just for one second there's a USB 3.0 connection right here just like on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 opposed to the standard USB 2.0 on the Samsung Galaxy S4. That much about hardware really quickly let's take a look at software. Now the Samsung on Galaxy S4 features TouchWiz user interface which you might love or hate it is completely up to you and has that tabbed featured groups of settings within the settings the app tray and all the other stuff like S health S view air gestures and whatever else you can enable opposed to this Samsung took TouchWiz to a whole new level this is our app tray and once we go into the notification shade you will see that all the buttons or all the icons for quick access are now rounded ones and the iconography as well as the icons and text have been modified just a little bit. Tapping on that button you can of course reconfigure these uh, quick toggles. Let's go right there, right back, jump into settings real quick and see that the new icons are present all the way and it's no longer a uh, it's no longer a tabbed representation and grouping of your settings. It is now a scrollable list where, of course, you can expand or collapse 
the settings. One other important feature which we need to mention is that the Galaxy S5 has a fingerprint scanner, but not a fingerprint scanner per se, like on the iPhone 5S. We'll talk about that more when we'll compare it to the 5S. This part right here of the screen, the bottom part, will read your fingerprint, and you will, we will try to show you how to set up a fingerprint to protect your device. If on the Samsung Galaxy S4 you were able to enable air gesture and air view and all the other so-called gimmicks, uh, they are not focusing on these anymore. You will not be able to find them here in the quick toggles. Instead, they are buried deep inside the settings. If you scroll through this entire list and go down to this category here, which is called motion, you have air view, which you can enable, of course. We all know that for the S planner, for gallery, for the video player, for the phone and in a separate category, motion and gestures called air browse, direct call, smart alert, mute pause, and capture screen. Another thing to mention is that Samsung emphasized that battery life is much, much better with an ultra power saving mode. Because of the fact that the specs are pretty much the same as on the S4, the battery is only 200 milliamp hours larger than on the S4. We have 2,600 milliamp hours on the Galaxy S4 and 2,800 milliamp hours on the Galaxy S5. And last but not least, jumping into the camera application just to see how the viewfinder has changed, we'll uh, try to uh, flip this to the front camera so we can see also uh, Jaime and myself shooting. Uh, we have a mode selector here, which is Samsung's thing. Of course, you can download more modes, we're guessing from that button right there. There you go, uh, third party or additional modes for the camera. Uh, we're gonna flip back to the main camera so that we can activate some even more modes. We got auto, beauty face, panorama, and all your other usual uh, modes. What else we have here inside the settings? We will be able to set all of the settings. We'll take a close look at this when we get this device in our review labs. But we'll try to keep this as short as possible. It's feature-packed, but uh, that's what we can do within uh, four or five minutes. This was a very short, very short look at the Samsung Galaxy S5 compared to the Galaxy S4. I've been Anton. I'm sweating. I've been talking a lot. Jaime is doing a great job trying to frame. Don't go anywhere. More videos of the S5 coming soon from both Barcelona and New York. Thank you very much for watching.